So now we get into the really fun stuff, which a lot of people, you think that me, what we're about to do, you might think is going to be very confusing, but I'm going to make this so enjoyable and so simple because I involve you in the thinking process and I squeeze the sponge on Dreamweaver, which means if you haven't taken my Dreamweaver classes before, all Dreamweaver does is simply this. It writes code. It does all the heavy lifting for you. So all the videos you've seen on Dreamweaver about writing code from scratch or code hinting, yeah, that's nice, but if you really want to keep it simple, that's what I do. I share with you the techniques that are going to make you money. So you want to learn how to write code, or you want to learn how to make money. My techniques will make you money because it's working smarter, it's working faster. It's basically letting the software, in this particular case, Dreamweaver do the heavy lifting. Okay, now this window we don't need, and in a previous video, all windows are under the window menu, and window files, command shift F, Macintosh control shift F for Windows based machines. Now, we're gonna make ourselves a brand new FTP, I'm sorry, brand new PHP page. So file new, control N or command N on Macintosh. All right, so we're gonna make a PHP page and we're gonna create. Now pay close attention to this because this is really how you should set this up the right way. When we save this file, keep in mind this is gonna be the administration page. So the administration page, the admin, which is you and your employees. Okay, this is not for the public. This is for you to pass or protect the back end. So you can add customers and clients and shipping information and products and everything that I go through step by step in my A to Z e-commerce PHP MySQL website on udemy.com. Yes, is this a paid advertisement? Of course it is. I'm offering things for free to give you a sample of how simple I can make this for you. So I'm right in my root folder. Now, how, why did they go right to the root folder? Because that was part of the reason I defined the site. So as an example, for those of you that are new to this, let's say that I wasn't paying attention and I was inside this other website, which uh, I don't even know where I am right now. Uh, now, because I defined my site, watch this. I can simply click site root that takes me right back to our root directory. And inside this root directory, we're gonna create ourselves a new folder and call it admin and it's return key. Now, just like any, if you're new to the whole web process, every folder can have its own home page. Let me repeat that. Every folder can have its own home page or index page. So it doesn't matter the suffix, this is still an index page. This could have been an index.php, index.html, index.cfm for cold fusion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I just want to be very clear about that. So a folder is just a fancy word for directory. So if you check out my, my learning website here in New York City, adobetrainingclasses.com, I have all my courses in separate folders, forward slash Dreamweaver, forward slash Photoshop, forward slash student support, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So inside of those folders have their own unique index home page. So this will now be the home page of this particular folder called index, which we're going to pass or protect and do some really cool stuff. Now, I would suggest you do again is the title of the site title of the page, the title of the page comes up in a search engine. And I, this is the personal preface, I'm just gonna put in the pipe symbol and I'm just gonna call this admin section. Okay, make a change, save a change. Good to get into. Now again, we're not gonna spend much time making the site look pretty. We're not gonna go into CSS. We're gonna make this form and functional. And like I said in our very first video, I wanna work with my database tab. If this is closed out, you can simply go to window and databases. Now, this is a very, very important part, okay? Before we do anything, just like we set up our FTP, and that's a good thing, your FTP has to be set up first before you can do any of this, okay? So it's actually telling you what you need to do. Create a site, choose a document type, set up a testing server, great. So we did all these things already. We defined our site, our document type is MySQL ready because it's a PHP file. If this is an HTML file, you would not see this information because HTML files cannot talk to a MySQL database. So the only choice we have here, and it's telling you what to do right here, click the plus button and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a MySQL connection. Now this is really important stuff to take a note on. Whatever you call this connection name, it's going, to, it's going to create a PHP file with that same name. So we're simply going to call this My Store Connect. Now again, by the time I publish this video, uh, this this information will be changed. So for you smart Alex out there that think you're going to you know log into my server, it, it, believe me, it's not going to happen. Okay. Now pay close attention to this. 
Okay, what we need to do is connect to my MySQL server. Now, similar to setting up an FTP connection, which we already did, if that is per hosting, per domain name, which means once your FTP is set up the first time, you don't have to touch it again. It's set up, it's gold, Dreamfinder knows exactly what you're doing. Create all the pages and all the folders you want, and it's the same FTP connection. And that's the same thing with this database. Notice I said the word database. This is a connection for the database, not for the table. It's that you don't create a connection for every single table. The database, the tables are basically enclosed inside of the database. So I can have 5, 10, 20, 30 tables, but it's still the same database connection. So what we do is we connect to what's called a local host. Okay, now we're going to put in the username. Now it's not the username of what we set up. It's the username plus the username of the account. Okay, so let's just, re let's just uh, hang on for a second. I think I got ahead of myself. So this is localhost. Okay, then I put in my username and password. Now again, I'm just going to put in fake information, but you would have to put the username for the web host, for the, uh, for the domain name itself, for the hosting plan itself, whatever your username for your account is that you set up originally. So it would be that username followed by the username of the database and then whatever password. Now, of course, if this information is correct, you would click right here and, t and connect to that database. So again, here's the objective. Dreamweaver needs to connect to the server, to the MySQL server, and this only has to be done one time. Once it's done the first time, you could simply don't have to do it again unless you change any kind of password or anything to do with the server. So I just want to be very clear about that. So if this is correct, I should be able to click right here and connect to the server. Now, of course, this is not my real information, so I can't do that. So if the information is correct, you, you're going to see the database information you set up. So again, this is the, it's not simply, remember we set up my store, but it's the prefix for, this, for the account itself. Okay, so it basically be for that server space. You would get that from who's ever hosting your, your website. So I just want to be very clear about that. So basically you put in the information there and you hit OK. Now, since you actually can't see my password in this particular case, this is really cool. So I'll go with that. So if this is correct, I would simply hit OK. Now again, this just needs to be set up one time per database, per server. Okay, so in general, most of you are probably never going to have a need to have more than one database on your server. It doesn't make a lot of sense to do that. If you have a very, very, very sophisticated site, that's a different issue, and I go into those, those details in my full-length course. Okay, so I've successfully set up a MySQL connection. Now, in our next video, we're going to set up what's called server behaviors to pass or protect this page and physically greet the user when they log in, and we'll do that starting next.